Today's story is an adaptation from The Athletic. If you like it, go and subscribe at theathletic.co.uk forward slash TIFO football to read more stories that you won't find anywhere else. Julian Nagelsmann's incredibly rapid career progression and his success as the youngest permanent coach in German top division history has been well documented. What's far less well known, however, is just how good a player he'd been before a botched knee operation finished his hopes of a playing career at the age of 20, and that many of his coaching principles were informed by his personal experiences. The key to understanding the RB Leipzig coach's extraordinary ability to hit a chord with players lies in the maturity and empathy he'd already shown as an adolescent. Nagelsmann was born in Bavaria and scouted by 1860 Munich at the age of 15 in 2002. Munich's second biggest club were known as one of the best developers of talent at the time, a real hotbed of up-and-coming pros. Nagelsmann, a tall, elegant centre-back, shared a dressing room with top players like the future United States and Borussia Mönchengladbach winger Fabian Johnson, the Bender twins Lars and Sven, and Julian Baumgartlinger, who are now all at Bayer Leverkusen. Former teammate Christian Tresch recalls Nagelsmann helping him to settle when he joined as a 16-year-old from his hometown club, MTV Ingolstadt. He was this incredibly funny, outgoing guy with a wicked sense of humour, he remembers. He welcomed me to the team with real warmth and we immediately clicked. The pressure to succeed can make for a pressurised, egocentric environment in academies, but 1860's ethos was different, recalls Benjamin Kaufman, another one of the club's former youth players who would become a close friend of Nagelsmann. There was a huge emphasis on signing youngsters who had the right attitude and character. There were no divas and no troublemakers. We were a really tight-knit unit, a super cool band of brothers. Thresh, nicknamed Trashy, Nagel and Kaufmann, now a midfielder at 4th Division SV Pippinsfried, all went to the same class in the Reine Werner Faschbinder Fachoboschule, a comprehensive secondary school in nearby Giesing. Nagelsmann excelled, but not by virtue of hard work. He had the knack of achieving maximum success with minimal effort because he could listen in class and take it all in, Tresh says. He was a super bright guy. Nagelsmann's keen perception allowed him to take things easy and entertain the classroom with an endless array of jokes. The whole class couldn't help but laugh about his quips, and even the teachers didn't mind when he was making fun of them. He did it in such a charming way that they never got angry with him, Kaufman remembers. He could really win people over. As they got older, the three of them often shared a ride in Nagelsmann's black Opel Astra, singing along to Westlife at the top of their voice. On nights off, they frequented Kunstpark Ost, a now defunct collection of clubs in an industrial area of Munich that catered to a wide variety of musical tastes. It was a different time then, Tresch says. You could do these things within reason. And in the dressing room too, Nagelsmann understood things more quickly than most. He hung on to the words of the coach and took everything in because he was so switched on and focused he solved problems before they truly arose. I hardly ever saw him make a tackle. He was always in the right position with plenty of time to win the ball. And at a time when German football was wearing itself off its age-old dependency on the sweeper system, Nagelsmann was looking like the perfect modern centre-back. His build-up play was outstanding, Trace says. He played these fine vertical balls to midfielders and oozed class. While Trace tried to emulate Arsenal's Patrick Vieira, Nagelsmann modelled himself on John Terry. Trace, who now plays for Alwessel in Dubai, and Kaufmann were convinced their friend was destined for a career in the Bundesliga, but a persistent back problem kept him out of the side for extended spells. Having been promoted to the under-23s at the age of 19, Nagelsmann never managed to play a competitive match again. Shortly after his career was officially over, fate delivered an even worse blow. His father Irvin passed away aged 56, following a short illness. Nagelsmann's two friends believe the tragic loss of his father forced him to grow up quicker than his peers. He was always more mature than most, but the extra responsibility he had to adopt on behalf of his family had a huge impact on his development, says Kaufman. The combination of his keen intellect, a larger-than-life persona, and his strong emotional connection with players was unique. TSG Hoffenheim sporting director Alexander Rosen told The Athletic. After a spell as an opposition scout for FC Augsburg's second team, under the guidance of Thomas Tuchel, Nagelsmann became a member of Hoffenheim's academy coaching staff in 2010. He was quickly made the under-16s coach and then kept steadily progressing, winning the club's first under-19 championship in 2014. The under-19s championship reinforced our belief in him, 
But it wasn't that important, Rosen said. We'd seen from the outset that he was very special. He's loud, extrovert and very funny, infectious. He gets the team and the whole staff to buy into his ideas. The moment he enters the room, you know he's around. Whether it's on the training pitch, during dinner with the team or in the changing room, he has a huge effect on people, thanks to his tall frame and his aura. Rosen describes Nagelsmann as a fastidious worker who is obsessed with details and sports and incredible knowledge of the game. While some felt that his appointment as head coach in 2016 in the midst of a relegation battle smacked of desperation or a PR campaign, the club claim they were assured of his suitability. Hoffenheim survived and shot up to fourth spot in his first full season the year after. Nagelsmann, Rosen added, is brutally ambitious. He always wants to do better and to win. That sets the tone for his team. I remember when he said that he wanted to be a contender for the championship with Hoffenheim. Some thought he was being unrealistic, but he wanted to push his players. Making players play well, the very essence of coaching, is a theme that comes up frequently when you talk to those that know him best. Nagelsmann is a tactics buff and an enthusiastic early adopter of new technology, such as giant video screens and drones in training. But when it comes down to it, his work is rather old-fashioned, closer to teaching. Julian is able to explain to players what they do right and what they do wrong. He's always able to give them concrete solutions. And they respond to that, said RB Leipzig sporting director Marcus Krusche. The key thing is, every player knows exactly what they're supposed to do on the pitch. Julian issues very clear, effective instructions in a very concise manner that's easily understood. And Serge Gnabry, the Bayern Munich and Germany forward, credits Nagelsmann with the fine-tuning both of his mentality and other technical aspects of his game when they worked together at Hoffenheim in 2017-18. I'd heard that he improves players and that's what happened to me, Gnabry says. He kept pushing me all the time. There was an enormous amount of feedback and the training was great. He showed me many situations on video, telling me that I should make runs between and behind the lines, rather than coming deep that often, for example. He really changed the way I saw the game, and he taught me to analyse myself much more. Krusha adds, Football teams have a good feel as to whether a coach can help them perform and overcome their problems. With Julian, nothing is put on. He's very straight and honest with his players, authentic, and it comes down to four things. He has a tremendous amount of social capital. He can recognise and maximise a player's potential. He can make players better and he can effectively intervene during games. His changes at half-time against Bayern Munich in the 1-1 draw at Leipzig last September were a good example of that. Having been outplayed in the first half, Nagelsmann took off wing-back Lucas Klustermann for defensive midfielder Diego Demmer and changed to a back four. Leipzig were able to defend higher and put more pressure on the ball and by the end of the game, they were unlucky not to have won it. And Rosen homes in on the same point. One of his greatest qualities is his ability to read the game. It doesn't take him long to recognise patterns of play and the spaces that appear. And more importantly, he's able to change things, implementing ideas that his team will have prepared for during the week. He is the complete package. The script for this video, written by Rafa Honigstein, was originally featured on The Athletic, the best place to read about football online. Whether it's more behind-the-scenes insight, dedicated local reporting about your team, or rich storytelling from around the world, you'll find it all in one place. And if you like today's video, you can follow both COVID-19's impact on football and loads of totally unrelated and spectacular football stories. So, get a seven-day free trial by visiting theathletic.co.uk forward slash TIFO football and get 50% off if you sign up for an annual subscription. To support TIFO, support The Athletic. Thanks for watching.